Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the final night of the FCPS Academic Team Tournament. My name is John Van Bloom. I'm the moderator tonight. Our specialty category tonight is the French Revolution. Dun, dun, dun. Uh, there will be four matches tonight, three semifinal matches, and then the winners of each match will meet at the final table. Usually very exciting stuff. I hope you enjoy this event, which pits many of the brightest minds in Frederick County, and I'd really say probably in the state of Maryland, if not the country, against each other in a friendly academic competition. We especially want to uh, thank and recognize some of our special guests tonight. We have uh, Acting Superintendent Dr. Marcos here. We have a number of uh, board members, including uh, Brad Young and Karen Yoho. Thank you all for coming. We'd also like to thank other sundry guests that we do not recognize, uh, but I definitely want to say thank you to uh, Kevin Kendrew, who uh, supervises uh, extracurricular athletics and gives us such great support. Uh, so uh, while I'm thanking people, I also want to thank uh, Commissar Bester Konsky and Math Commissar Kelly Meisner. Is she saying maybe commissar is not the right word now? We'll, we'll take notes on that afterwards. Uh, we'd like to thank Frederick High School in general and Principal Francis Gina in particular for allowing us to uh, every week to play in this beautiful high school. Really fantastic. Love being here. Centrally located and everything. We love it all. And um, we'd also like to thank the Frederick High custodial staff for all the setups they do every week. Thank you to them. And of course, uh, Kavet Hammond, who's the athletic director juggling a basketball game nearly every time we're here uh, and our matches as well. So thank you, Ms. Hammond. A uh, quick warning uh, that this auditorium is designed to help sound travel. So please play along, but only inside your head. Uh, we appreciate that. Even quiet voices sometimes can be heard up here on stage and we want to be completely, completely fair. And now, it's my great pleasure to invite tonight's first semifinal match of Thomas Johnson, Frederick High, and Oakdale High Schools. Come on up. Welcome, guys. Glad you're here. We'll start with a buzzer check. Frederick. All right. Round one is the, called the lightning round, and it's a competitive round using the buzzer system for team recognition. There's 10 questions on a surprise topic, so none of these teams know what I'm about to ask them, which makes it especially tricky. They get one point for a correct response and one point deleted for an incorrect response. Team introductions. Frederick, what would you like to introduce? To my far left is Stella, to my left is Remy, to my right is Nick, I'm Paul, and we'd like to thank all the parents for coming to support us tonight. Yay, parents. TJ. I'm Juniper Trussell. I'm Elliot Anderson. I'm Ben Parada. I'm Mariana Schwartz, and we would like to thank Ms. Kibler for these new scarves. There you go. Very French Revolution of you, if I can say that. Oakdale. I'm Arian, and to my right are Akash, Matthew, and Olivia. Sorry, to my left. And we'd like to thank the board members for coming. Excellent. Yeah. Thank you, thank you. You're welcome back anytime. All right, time to pick. And this pick is for Frederick. X, Y, or Z for lightning. X. X marks the spot, indeed. OK. Your topic is state nicknames. I'll give you some nicknames for a state. Not all of them are official, just things people call that state. And then you give me the state. Here we go. Number one, America in miniature. Frederick, Maryland. Maryland it is, yes indeed, well done. Question number two, crossroads of the revolution, the garden state. Frederick. New Jersey. 
New Jersey is right. Question number three, birthplace of, good, birthplace of aviation. Frederick? North Carolina. Actually, it's Ohio, where they were from originally, but not off. Question number four, the mother of Southwestern statesmen, the butternut state, the volunteer state. TJ? Tennessee. Tennessee's wrong. Question number five, the friendly state, the beehive state. TJ? Answer, please. Utah. Utah, well done. Question number six, mother of presidents. TJ? Answer, please. Virginia. Virginia is correct. Question number seven, the blizzard state, the coyote state, Mount Rushmore state. Frederick, South Dakota. South Dakota is right. Way to wait for it. Question number eight, New England of the West, the gopher state. Frederick, Oregon. Minnesota. Question number nine, the cotton state. The Yellowhammer State. TJ? Alabama. Alabama is right. And question number 10, Seward's Folly. Land? Frederick? Alaska. Alaska is right, and that ends the round. <laughs> All right, we are ready for round two. Round two is the team round. Individual schools will be posed six questions from a broad variety of topics. They get one point for a correct response, no points deleted for an incorrect response. Frederick, any new players? To my far left is Jonas, to my right is Sophia, and we'd like to thank the scores table for helping out. Always a good idea. <laughs> TJ. My name is Cora Freda. I'm Dylan Owusu. And I would like to thank my brother, even though he's on the Frederick team. All right. <laughs> little shout out, shout out from the stage, Oakdale. Uh, my name is Matt, to my right is Reed, and to my left are Amelia and Nick, and we would like to thank the scores table tonight. There you go. Giving away free points. Okay, TJ, you are actually picking for Frederick. So would you like X, Y, or Z for them? Z. Z. Z it is. These questions are just for Frederick. Question number one. The 1800s saw many new inventions key to the development of the industrial might of the United States. The earliest locomotives were invented in the early 1800s and ran on this kind of power, which required water and wood initially, and then shifted to coal. What kind of power moved the early locomotives? Steam. Steam, that's right. Question number two. August Wilson is, the most, is most celebrated as a dramatist for his Pittsburgh Cycle, a series of 10 plays all based in different decades of the 20th century. Perhaps his most famous story is this one. Like many of his stories, it is about race and the erected barriers we try to overcome, but also about the walls we create between members of a family, between fathers and sons and wives and husbands. Name this play made into a celebrated 2016 film directed and starring Denzel Washington. Moonlight. Ah, fences, we're looking for there. Question number three, Time Magazine has been choosing a person of the year since 1927. Whom did they choose for last year? The richest man in the world, of course. This South African may be on track to become the first trillionaire. We'll have to see how the stock for Tesla goes. Named the co-founder of Zip2, Neuralink, OpenAI, and the founder of SpaceX and Tesla. Elon Musk. Mr. Musk, indeed. Number four, in the science of genetics, this is the term given to a variant form of a gene. It might be created on purpose or by accident, but the X-Men in science fiction stories were said to have these and thus not fully human. Mutation. Mutations. Question number five, the effects of global warming are here, though some places feel the changes more intensely than others. This African nation is one of the fastest growing in the world, but is expected to begin feeling longer droughts and rising sea levels. Name this quickly developing African powerhouse with its capital of Lagos. Nigeria. Nigeria, that's right. And question number six, hockey has its own lingo. When players commit an infraction, they get sent to the sin bin. What's the more common name for the sin bin? Penalty box. Penalty box is right. That ends the round for Frederick. Okay, Oakdale, you are picking for TJ. Would you rather X or Y for them? X. X, indeed, of course. All right, these questions are just for TJ. 
The 1800s saw many new inventions key to the development of the United States. This invention is usually credited to Samuel L. Morse, but lots of people deserve credit, including Leonard Gale and Joseph Henry. What 19th century invention uses electrical current to send coded messages of dots and dashes? The telegraph. The telegraph, yes. Question number two. Her autobiographical play, To Be Young, Gifted, and Black, inspired Nina Simone's song. Her most celebrated play takes its title from Langston Hughes' poem, Harlem. Name Lorraine Hansberry's most famous play. A Raisin in the Sun? Correct. Question number three. This is a two-part answer. Time Magazine has been choosing a person of the year since 1927. In 2020, they named the winners of the 2020 presidential election in the United States. Name the current president and vice president. Biden and Harris. Very good. Question number four. In the science of genetics, this code is king. Name the three-letter abbreviation for the hereditary material in humans and almost all other organisms. Nearly every cell in our body contains what molecule? Sorry? Carbon. Uh, no, we're looking for DNA. Question number five. The effects of global warming are already here, though in some places feel the changes more intensely than others. In 2009, 80% of this country's largest city was underwater. This Pacific Island nation has developed a climate commission to help deal with the expected problems from floods. Unfortunately, they already deal with earthquakes and tsunamis. Name this country with its capital at Manila. Philippines. Philippines is right. And question number six, hockey has its own lingo. Your chiclets are particular parts of your body that many hockey players are missing. What do we normally call chiclets? Teeth. Teeth. Well done. And that ends the round for TJ. All right, Oakdale, why is for you? Question number one, the 1800s saw many new inventions key to the development of the United States. Mail delivery was a real challenge for a growing country and the standard 24 days from Missouri to California was not quick enough, especially for those who wanted news on the eve of the Civil War. This invention, a series of riders and horses, brought mail and messages across land and captured the country's imagination. Name this financially disastrous early mail service which only lasted 18 months. Answer, please. Uh, is it snail mail? <laughs> no, it's uh, the Pony Express. Pony Express. Question number two. The uh, American playwright Arthur Miller was deeply disturbed by the work of the Congressional Committee on Un-American Activities. He wrote this play, set during the Salem witch trials, as an allegory. Name this tale of intolerance, superstition, and justice perverted. The Crucible? Crucible is right. Question number three, Time Magazine has been choosing a person of the year since 1927. Who was the person of the year in 2019? This young Swedish woman has become the face of the green movement and its fight against the forces of climate change. Name this outspoken young woman, blah, blah, blah. Greta Thunberg. You got it. Question number four, in the science of genetics, this German monk was at the forefront of the science. Name the man who began our understanding of hereditary, heredity in traits from his experiments on peas. Answer, please. His name's Mendel. Mendel. <clears throat> Question number five. The effects of global warming are here, though some places feel the changes more intensely than others. This island nation is located in the Atlantic Hurricane Basin, and so the increased intensity of the storms becomes a threat multiplier. With its mountainous landscape and problems with deforestation, floods are increasingly likely. Name this impoverished country with its capital of Port-au-Prince. Answer, please. Dominican Republic. Oh, so close. Right next, sorry, Haiti. And then uh, question number six. Hockey has its own lingo. Being called a sieve is a negative thing. What position in hockey would hate to be called a sieve? Goalie. Goalie is right. And then it's the round for Oakdale. <laughs> All right, welcome up. So round four, or sorry, round three, is uh, called the math round. It's a competitive round using the buzzer system for team recognition. Ten questions, five of which are math questions and five general academic trivia questions. Players have 30 seconds to respond to the math questions. Remember, once the scores table recognizes you for a math question, you must answer immediately. No consulting, right? One point added for a correct response, one point subtracted for an incorrect response. Frederick, would you like to introduce any new players? Second to my left is Tony, and I want to thank my sister for the shout out. Thank <laughs> you.
TJ. I'm Jeremiah Taylor. I'm Ben Marshall. And I'm Ray Wong. And I would like to thank our teachers, Big Spangler and Ms. Baller for Mr. Baller for coming out and supporting us tonight. Absolutely. And Oakdale. Um, I'm Akash. To my left is Mackenzie, Aaron, and Teja. And we'd like to thank our moderator. All right. Thank you. Plus one. All right, TJ, this is your call here. Would you like X, Y, or Z for the math? Why, please? Why? Why? Because math is fun. Ha, ha, ha. All right, here we go. Question number one. Who created the characters Mary Brandybuck, Queen Galadriel, Gimli the Dwarf? Frederick. Tolkien. Tolkien is right. Question number two is a math question. A raffle has prizes valued at $1, $3, $15, $60, $120, $360, and $1,800. If exactly $10,000 in prizes is to be awarded, what is the least number of prizes that can be awarded, assuming that there will be at least one prize of each value awarded? Time. 16, we're looking for there. Question number three. What war included the generals Bernard Montgomery, Charles de Gaulle, George Marshall, Douglas MacArthur, and Omar Bradley? TJ. Answer, please. World War II. World War II is correct. Question number four is a math question. Add the following two numbers in base four. One, zero, three, two, zero, one, three, and one, two, three, one, three, two. TJ? One, two, two, one, two, one, one. Correct. Question number five. There are real arguments about whether this movie can qualify as a musical. The Cup song is memorable, but because the characters know... Oakdale. Pitch Perfect. Pitch Perfect is right. Question number six is a math question. How many integers between one million and two million are divisible by 99? time. 10,101. Question number seven. What disease does an oncologist work to treat? Frederick. Cancer. Cancer is right. Question number eight is a math question. How many degrees is two pi over three radians? Frederick. 120. 120 is correct. Question number nine. What country has Budapest as its capital? Frederick. Yeah. Hungary. Hungary is right. And question number 10 is a math question. The mean of Danielle's test scores is 85. If Danielle's lowest test score, which is 61, were to be discarded, the mean of her remaining tests would be 88. How many tests did Danielle take?
time? The answer was nine. And that ends the round. All right, we are ready for round number four. Round number four is a specialty round. It's a competitive round using the budget system for team recognition. Teams answer 10 questions from a special category that was announced in advance. Tonight's category is the French Revolution. One point added for a correct response, one point subtracted for an incorrect response. Frederick, any new players? To my far left is Jack, to my right is Pia, and we'd like to thank our amazing coaches, Ms. Garlitz and Ms. Melcher. Here, here. TJ. No new introductions, but we'd like to thank the guillotine for both starting and ending the reign of terror. All right. <laughs> Might hear more about that momentarily. And Oakdale. No new introductions, but we would like to thank all of our seniors on the team. Yeah. It's senior night. It is. Okay, so this choice is for Oakdale. And what do you guys want? You want X, Y, or Z on the French Revolution? X, X it is. <clears throat> all right, away we go. They couldn't find a place big enough to hold them all, so they wound up here on this big... Frederick tennis court. Tennis court, yeah, that's where I was going. Good job. Question number two. In 1775, the early seeds of the revolution began to sprout in the northern, eastern, and western parts of France when the price of grain, and therefore bread, began to rise. Mostly brought about by bad weather, economic policies also played a part, but the peasants who were suffering from severe hunger felt a need to express their rage at an ineffective government. What happy name was given to this inauspicious revolt? TJ. Ants, please. The Bastille. Ah, we're looking for the flower war or the flower rebellion there. Question number three. Interestingly, this famous Frenchman was anti-slavery, and though he was eliminated in some places, he did not get to all the colonies. He was head of the Jacobin Club and led... TJ? Robespierre? Robespierre is correct. Question number four. Henry IV of France was the first Bourbon king, and the Louis that, came, that followed him all took the throne very young. After Henry's assassination, his son Louis was only nine years old when he became the king first dominated by his mother, Marie de Medici, and later he turned the reins of power over to Cardinal Richelieu. It was Richelieu who set up the absolute monarchy system for which number, Louis? TJ? 14. Ah, 13. Question number five. She's sometimes called the world's first feminist. She published the declaration. Frederick? Olympe de Gauche. De Gauche is right, well done. Question number six. Because the political and financial situation was so bleak, Louis XVI was finally forced to call the Estates General in May 1789. In June 1789, the Third Estate renamed itself this. TJ, the National Assembly. National Assembly, yes. Question number seven. In 1670, this system was first proposed, and then people argued about it for 100 years. Named for the Greek word for measure, it was finally adopted Frederick? Metric system. Metric system, yes. Question number eight. This man was a, the first big mythic hero of the revolution, the voice of the people, was initially buried in the Pantheon, a place designed for great heroes. TJ? Voltaire? Oh, we're looking for Mirabeau. So once they dis uh, discovered that he was in the pay of Louis XVI, they dug him up. <clears throat> Question number nine. Born in Austria, she was just 14. TJ, Marie Antoinette. Marie Antoinette, yes, got that one out of the way. Number 10. The French government had many money problems, but helping this young country win a war did not help. TJ, USA. USA, and that ends the, the round. <laughs> All right, we are ready for the final round. The grab bag round is a competitive round using a buzzer system for team recognition. 20 questions on a variety of topics. One point added for a correct response, one point subtracted for an incorrect response. Frederick, any new players? To my right is Nahid, and we'd like to thank Stella for sharpening all the pencils throughout this whole season. <laughs> yeah. The real work. TJ. 
No new introductions, but we would like to thank Ms. Kibler and Frederick for bringing about such a great season. Yeah, very good, very good. Sportsmanship points. And Oakdale. Uh, I'm Taha Hug. And we would like to thank Fortnite for putting the gritty back in the item shop. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Scores table. Toughest question of the night for you guys. X, Y, or Z? Y. Y, indeed. Round five, 20 questions, here we go. According to Billboard, Don't Talk About Bruno is still number one on the charts. TJ? Encanto? I'm sorry? Encanto? Uh, no, we're looking for Heat Waves, which is the song that's number two right now. Question number two, when this book first came out, it took five years to sell 2,000 copies. Robert Frost once said, in this one book, Thoreau surpasses everything we have had in America. Name the book that warns us the mass of men lead lives of quiet desperation and go to the grave with the song still in them. Name Henry David Thoreau's masterwork. Walden is its call. Question number three. Solid under normal conditions, this radioactive metal is found in trace levels in soil, rocks, water, and even people. Weakly radioactive, it is sometimes used in reactors, but it's not as powerful as uranium. Name this element, abbreviated TH. TJ? Thorium? Thorium, that's right. Question number four. This type of art piece is really a collection of smaller bits put together in an artistic way. TJ? Mosaic? Ah, we're looking for collage there. Question number five. His life was turned upside down in the 90s, but now his show is getting rebooted and taking a more serious... TJ? Fresh Prince of Bel-Air? Yes, we we'll take Fresh Prince of Bel-Air, or the remake is uh, called Bel-Air, either one. Question number six is a choice. In what year was the Battle of Yorktown? 1780, 1781, 1782, or 1783? Oakdale? 1781. It was indeed, well done. Question number seven. You can fail and still not be a failure. So said this highly successful athlete, Michaela Schifrin who has won 73 World Cup competitions in this sport. Frederick, skiing. Skiing, we'll take skiing or downhill. Question number eight, what US state is bounded by Texas, Arkansas, and Mississippi? Frederick, Louisiana. Louisiana is right. Question number nine, this unusual wind instrument was first used by Australian Aborigines. Sometimes, TJ. The didgeridoo. Didgeridoo, well done, yes. Question number 10, he once wrote, you can't wait for inspiration, you have to go after it with a club. Name this author of Martin Eden, To Build a Fire, White Fang. Frederick? Jack London. Jack London, indeed. Question number 11, a group of these is called a tower. They do not... TJ? Giraffes? Giraffes, yes. It's a good name for him, right? Yeah. Question number 12, when looking over the bestseller list, one name might seem familiar, Jeff Kinney. He's written another book in his series about a middle schooler. TJ? Diary of a Wimpy Kid? Yes, Diary of a Wimpy Kid, well done. Question number 13, world champion Magnus Carlsen was beaten in this game by a 16-year-old. Frederick? Chess. Chess, yes, kind of the shocker. 14, under which U.S. president was the Environmental Protection Agency founded? TJ, Nixon. Nixon is right. Question number 15, scientists have recently concluded that modern sea rise actually started in this century, coinciding with the growth of industrialization. Frederick. Ants, please. 18th. Say again. 18th century. Uh, not the 18th century, 1800s or 19th century, would accept. 16, this state has a religious motto, with God all things are possible. The cardinal is the official bird for this Buckeye state. Name the state. Oakdale. Ohio. Ohio, yeah, well done. 17, he helped develop the chipmunk soul sampling style for some rap artists. Frederick. Kanye West. Kanye, yes. 18, this Greek goddess was the patron to the art of weaving and protector of the city. She's a warrior goddess. Frederick. Athena? Athena is right. Question 19 is a choice. Which of these snakes is not poisonous? The asp, the python, the cobra. Frederick, python. Python is right. And question number 20, next week begins March, which is a traditional time to begin. Frederick. 
Cleaning. I'm sorry? Cleaning. No, we're looking for March Madness, but that ends the match. <laughs> round number one is the lightning round, competitive round, using the buzzer system for team recognition. Ten questions on a surprise topic. Aren't you excited to learn the surprise topic? You look excited. Yes. Uh, scoring one point for a correct response, one point to lead for an incorrect response. Urbana, would you like to introduce your players? To my far left is Obi. To my immediate left is Nathan. To my immediate right is Holden. I'm Trevor. And we'd like to thank the parents for getting us here tonight. There you go. Walkersville. Introducing Evan Eels to my right. My name is Akwetse Ayayi. Ruben Putamana to my left. And uh, Ella Carr to my far left. And we would like to thank uh, everyone here for endorsing the spirit of competition. There you go. There you go. Tuscarora. My name is Emily. Next to me are Madison, Tazana, and Kira. And we'd like to thank our captain, Ms. Nichols, or our captain, Loris, and our coach, Ms. Nichols, for all they've done for us this season. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> Super. <laughs> Scores tables all set. All right, uh, this is for Urbana. What do you guys want? You want Y or Z for the lightning round? Y. Y, okay. Bird brain. Identify these things connected with birds and types of birds. So most of the answers are bird names, but not all of them, just associated with birds, okay? Here we go. Question number one. This is the real live bird some parents give credit for reproduction. Urbana. Stork. Stork is right. This bird is eating a snake on the flag of Mexico. Urbana. Eagle. Eagle is right. Edgar Allan Poe had this bird. Urbana. Raven. Raven is right. Question number four, both Arizona and St. Louis. Walkersville. Cardinal. Cardinals, that's right. Largest bird in the world is? Urbana. Ostrich. Ostrich. Ostrich is right. Question number six, birds have now been connected with these ancient creatures. Walkersville. Dinosaurs. Dinosaurs, that's right. Question number seven, mythological bird that is reborn. Urbana. Phoenix. Phoenix is right. Question number eight, when it flies, it can read altitudes of 15,000 feet with wings that can be as wide as 10 feet. This is the largest bird. Walkersville. Condor. Condor, yes, in North America. Question number nine, robin's eggs are tinted this beautiful color. Walkersville. Blue. Blue is right. And question number 10, a group of these fascinating blackbirds is called a murder. Urbana. Crow. Crows are right, and that ends the round. Okay, ready for the team round. This is the packet round. Individual schools will be posed a six questions on a very broad variety of topics. They get one point added for a correct response, and no points deleted for an incorrect response. Urbana, any new players? Uh, to my right is Jonathan, to my immediate left is Jenna, and to my far left is Icy, and we would like to thank all our seniors. All right. Walkersville. To my left is Chris Patel, my name is Aquila Yai, to my right is Evan Yields, and to my far right is Ben Atelsic, and we'd like to thank the score table. All right. And Tuscarora. My name is Allison, to my left I have Aliza, Janet, and Jack, and we'd like to thank the judges table for playing the music. There you go. Thank you, Ms. Meisner. Okay, uh, so we are going to do the pick here. So, Walkersville, you are picking for Urbana. Would you like X, Y, or Z for them? X. X it is. These questions are just for Urbana. U.S. history has many political parties that influence our thinking today. This group developed early in U.S. history, supporting the passage of the new Constitution. It dominated the new government from 1789 to 1800. Name this party that favored a stronger central government to protect our new liberties. Federalist. Federalist, that's right. Question number two, this celebrated Andrew Lloyd Webber musical was based on a poem by T.S. Eliot. It ran in London for 21 years and on Broadway for 18, both records at the time. Its most famous song is probably Memory, sung by Grizabella. Name this tale of Rum Tum Tugger, Jelly Orm, and Mr. Mistopheles. Cats. Cats, that's right. Question number three, music and fashion has been looking back at the 90s recently. Name this highly successful LA rock band that combined punk, funk, and alternative rock in hits like Danny California, Other Side, and Californication. Red Hot Chili Peppers. Correct. 
Question number four, as science knowledge has expanded, it has become harder and harder to know a lot about a lot. Many doctors now specialize. What O word do we use to describe a doctor who specializes in the treatment of the disorders and diseases of the eye? Warning, optometrists have not been to medical school, so they are technically not doctors. Ophthalmologists? Ophthalmologists, what we're looking for there. Question number five, this secretive country is one of the world's most repressive countries. In the last few years, their tests with missiles and nuclear weapons have alarmed many of their more peaceful neighbors. Name this Chinese allied country with its capital at Pyongyang. North Korea. North Korea is right. And last question, while the Beijing Winter Olympics are over, m people are still talking about Bing Duen Duen. What role did he play in the recent Olympics? He was the mascot? He was the mascot, and then it's around for a banner. <laughs> Tuscarora, you're picking for Walkersville. Would you like Y or Z for them? Y. Y. Yeah. Question number one, this is just for Walkersville. <clears throat> Many U.S. political parties have influenced our thinking today. This party was founded by anti-Andrew Jackson forces in 1834. William Henry Harrison and Zachary Taylor were both elected president as members of this party. Henry Clay and Daniel Webster were both members of this party. That eventually splintered over slavery, and then remnants of the party created the Republican Party. Name this party, which took its name from the anti-monarchist party in England. The Whigs. The Whigs. Whig parties, right? Question number two, this celebrated Andrew Lloyd Webber musical was based on a novel by Gaston LaRue. The musical opened in 1986 and is believed to have been seen by over 130 million people. Its most celebrated song is probably, All I Ask of You. Name this tale of Christine Daae, a ghost, Raoul, and Carlotta. Phantom of the Opera? Correct. Question number three. Music and fashion have been looking back at the 90s recently. Name this highly successful New York-born rapper with hits like Dear Mama, Keep Your Head Up, and All Eyes on Me. Tupac? Tupac is right. Question number four. As science knowledge has expanded, it's become harder and harder to know a lot about a lot. Many doctors now specialize. What O word do we use to describe a doctor who specializes in the musculoskeletal system? Oncologist? Now we're looking for orthopedist there. Question number five. Tensions with China have marred this island's development, but it has built itself the 15th largest economy in the world. Politically contentious, the U.S. has sold many weapons systems to this country to help protect them from invasion by China. Name this island nation with its capital at Taipei. Taiwan. Taiwan is right. And question number six, while the Beijing Olympics are over, people are still talking about Nathan Chen's gold medal performance in this sport. Figure skating. Figure skating, and then it's around for a walk. <laughs> so Tuscarora, you have Z. Question number one, U.S. history has had many political parties that influence our thinking today. This party, first organized by Teddy Roosevelt in the election of 1912, was also called the Bull Moose Party named this Liberal Party, resurrected a few times, including 1924 with Robert La Follette and 1948 with Henry Wallace. This party was against child labor, for equal rights, and for collective bargaining, all very popular positions, which put pressure on the major U.S. parties to adopt. Name this party, whose name implies a movement forward. Democratic Republic? We're looking for the Progressive Party there. Question number two, this celebrated musical is based on a novel written by Victor Hugo. It opened on Broadway in 1987, has both French and English versions, and is seen continuously by traveling companies in many countries around the world. Its most celebrated song may very well be the bawdy tune, Master of the House, which I will not sing for you. Uh, name this tale of Jean Valjean, Cosette, and Inspector Javert. Jean Valjean. All right. Name is Rob. He corrected himself. Yes, correct. <clears throat> Question number three. Music and fashion has been looking back at the 90s recently. Name this highly successful Seattle grunge band with hit songs like Come As You Are, Something In The Way, and Lithium. No answer. Uh, we're looking for Nirvana there. Question number four, as science knowledge has expanded, it's become harder and harder to know a lot about a lot. Many doctors now specialize. What O word do we use to describe a doctor who specializes in mothers giving birth to babies? 
Obstetrics? Yeah, we'll take obstetrics or obstetrician. Question number five. This East Asian country faced a secret bombing campaign during the Vietnam War. It was also home to the notorious Pol Pot, who successfully led the Khmer Rouge to power in the 1970s. Name this economically disadvantaged Southeastern Asian country with its capital at Phnom Penh. No answer. All right, we're looking for Cambodia there. And question number six, while the Beijing Winter Olympics are over, people are still talking about the figure skating team from this country, who had one member test positive for a banned substance and still won the gold and silver medals in women's figure skating. Russia. Russia is right, and that ends the round. All right, we are up and ready for round three. Round three is the math round. It's a competitive round using a buzzer system for team recognition. Ten questions with five of them being math questions and five general academic trivia questions. Players have 30 seconds to respond to the math questions. Remember, once the scores table recognizes you for the math questions, you have to answer immediately. Right? We've got a quick cut on that. One point added for a correct response, one point subtracted for an incorrect response. Urbana, any introductions? To my immediate right is Rohit, to my far right is Rital, and we'd like to thank Ms. Majner for the great math questions this season. Absolutely. Walkersville. To my right is Lizzie, 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 Lizzie Legere, and my and we'd like to thank the coaches tonight. Yeah. <laughs> Tuscarora. My name is Rita. To my left are Laura, Sam, and Travis. And we'd like to thank all the seniors for their hard work. Yeah. Hey, seniors. OK, Walkersville, you're picking. Uh, would you like X or Z? X. X it is. Question number one is a math question. Michelle teaches on Tuesday and Thursday evenings. On Tuesdays, she makes $112.50. And on Thursdays, she makes $135. There are 31 days this month. What is the minimum amount that Michelle could earn this month? Urbana? $585.40. $990. <laughs> Question number two. What do we call a doctor who specializes in children and their diseases? Walkersville. Pediatrician. Pediatrician is correct. Question number three is a math question. Add the following two numbers in base seven. Three, six, two, four, five, one, and two, five, one, zero, six. Walkersville? Four, two, zero, five, six, zero. Correct. <laughs> Question number four, who is Ian Fleming's most famous character? Urbana. James Bond. James Bond. Question number five is a math question. In how many ways can all the numbers, one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven, be separated into two groups so that the sum of the numbers in both groups is the same? time? Uh, the answer was four. Question number six. The songs For Good, Gravity. Tuscarora. Wicked. Wicked. Well done. Question number seven is a math question. How many radians is 315 degrees? Urbana. Seven pi over four. Correct. Question number eight. What country has Addis Ababa as its capital? Walkersville. Ethiopia. Ethiopia is correct. Question number nine is a math question. What common fraction T satisfies the equation T divided by the quantity 3T plus 1 equals 4 fifths?
Urbana. Four, four over seven. I'm sorry, it's negative four over seven. Question number 10. What war included the military leaders, Eric Ludendorff, Paul von Hindenburg, John? Urbana. World War I. World War I is right, and that ends the round. Okay, we are ready for round four. Round four is a competitive round using the buzzer system for team recognition. Teams answer 10 questions from a special category announced in advance. Tonight's category is the French Revolution. Scoring one point added for a correct response, one point subtracted for an incorrect response. Urbana, any new players? To my left is Sarah, to my immediate right is Suhan, and to my far right is, <laughs> sorry, to my, to my left is Arushi, and to my far right is Sarah. I'm Serena, and we'd like to thank our coaches. Yeah, absolutely. Well done. Walkersville. Uh, to my far right, we have Root White House. To my immediate right, we have Esther Odu, um, of non Shore, and we would like to thank Tennis Course for, for being multi-purposeful. Okay. <laughs> Tuscarora. Je veux dire merci to my cousin for inspiring me to join academic team, and, um, sorry, on my left is Priyanka, um, Logan, and Jake. My name is Crystal, and um, I also like to say thank you for a great last year in academic team. All right, yeah. I think we're all having fun. That's good. So uh, this is uh, Tuscarora's choice here. Would you like Y or Z for the French Revolution? Why? Why, indeed. Okay, 10 questions, here we go. Henry IV of France was the first Bourbon king, and the Louis that followed him all took the throne very young. This King Louis was the five-year-old great-grandson. Urbana. Louis the um, 15th. Say again. Louis the 15th. Louis the 15th, yes, well done. Question number two. Some historians name this date, June 7th, 1788, and not Bastille Day as the true start. Tuscarora. Hands, please. Bastille Day? Now, it's, we're looking for the day of the tiles here. This is about a year before. Question number three. He once said, I prefer liberty with danger better than peace with slavery. This Roman Catholic convert thought people in their natural state were basically good, but it was the evils of society that corrupted them. Name this Swiss philosopher who propounded the theory. Walkersville. Hands, please. Voltaire. And we're looking for Rousseau there. Question number four, the popular tricolor cockade initially was just two colors. This third color was added to show support for the house. Urbana. White. White, yes, white was added to show support for the king. Question number five, he was probably dyslexic for he could not read or write well at all, but he had a prodigious memory for the spoken word and boy was he a great speaker. He was helped in that he was a huge man, but his feud with Robespierre and his political opposition to the reign of terror. Walkersville. Danton. Danton is right, Georges Danton. Question number six. Uh, the constitution that passed in 1791 did not call for a republic, as many of the radicals. Walkersville. Constitutional monarchy? Yes, constitutional monarchy is what they called for. Question number seven. Everyone has heard of the sans culottes. Walkersville. Without knee breachers? Uh, we're looking for red, the color of the hats that they wore. Question number eight. Getting together and talking about the issues of the day was a definite fashion in Paris before, during, and after the revolution. This moderate club was also called the Patriotic Society, and they said... Urbana. Jacobins. Ah, we're looking for the 1789 club there. More moderate group. Question number nine. At one point, there were two or three popes of the Catholic Church, and one of them wound up ruling this city in France. Seven popes and two anti-popes lived there throughout the 1300s and into the 1400s. Louis XIV annexed this city twice, and Louis XV also struggled to keep it into French hands. Finally, in 1791, this city was permanently reacquired by France, though it took the pope six more years to make it official. Name this city with the largest Gothic cathedral. Urbana. Avignon. Avignon is right, yes. And question number 10, the march of the women of Paris to this place was a turning point. Walkersville. Versailles. Versailles, and that ends the round. All right, 
We are ready for round five. Round five is a competitive round using the buzzer system for team recognition. 20 questions on a variety of topics. One point added for a correct response. One point subtracted for an incorrect response. Urbana, any final introductions? To my far left is Thomas, and we would like to thank Frederick High School for hosting Model UN next weekend. All right, very cool. Walker Zone. Uh, there's no new introductions, but we'd like to thank our seniors for being here today. Here, here. Tuscarora. To my far left is Tish, and I'm Emily, and we would like to thank FCPS for their surprise two hour delay. <laughs> yes. The, the play is much sharper tonight, probably because of those little extra hours. So thank you guys for that. And uh, scores table, toughest call of the night, X or Z? X. X it is, of course. All right, 20 questions for honor and glory. Here we go. Question number one. He only lived to be 35 years old, but he produced over 800 distinct musical works. Perhaps he completed so many because he started so young, composing to European nobility. Urbana. Mozart. Mozart is right. Question number two. He said, into each life, some rain must fall. What New England poet wrote Wreck of the Hesperus, Evangeline, and Paul Revere's Ride? Urbana. Longfellow? Longfellow is right. Question number three. Jupiter is our largest planet. What planet is our second largest? Urbana. Saturn. Saturn is right. Question number four. She created Gray's Anatomy, private practice. Walkersville. Shonda Rhimes. Shonda Rhimes is right. Question number five. This American police drama created by Dick Wolf began in 1990. Walkersville. Law and Order. Law and Order is right. Question number six. What famous general won the Battle of the Granicus River? He realized the army would help to sorry, he realized the river would help to neutralize the greater numbers of the Persian army and the muddy soil would hinder their chariots. He used the same tactics in the Battle of Isis, where he defeated a Persian army under the command of Darius himself. Name this greatest of Macedonian commanders. Urbana. Alexander the Great. Alexander the Great, yes. Question number seven. What American poet wrote Stopping by the Woods on a Snowy Evening? Urbana. Frost. Frost. Second time tonight. Sorry about that. Question number eight. What U.S. state is bordered by Idaho and Oregon? Urbana. Washington. Washington state. Question number nine. This instrument plucks the horizontal strings through a keyboard system. Tuscarora. Piano. That's a harpsichord, actually. <laughs> Question number ten. This Greek god is the god of earthquakes. Walkersville. Hermes? Ah, uh, Poseidon. Question number 11. This important organ is critical for digestion and cleaning toxic... Tuscarora. Ants, please. Liver. Liver is right. Question number 12. This is a two-part answer. This past weekend at the NBA All-Star Weekend, these two men hugged each other in a long embrace. Walkersville. Dennis Rodman and Michael Jordan. Uh, close. Michael Jordan and LeBron James. Question number 13. This well-known but mysterious hacker group has declared cyber war against Russia. Urbana. Anonymous. Anonymous is right. Question number 14. Which president was commander at both the Battle of Horseshoe Bend and the Battle of New Orleans? Urbana. Jackson. Jackson is right. Question number 15. The Board of Education voted this past Wednesday to eliminate... Tuscarora. Masks. Masks, indeed. Question number 16, this state's motto sounds like a tourist trap. If you seek a pleasant peninsula. Urbana. Ants, please. Florida. Michigan. Question number 17, Gordon Thomas, sorry, Gordon Matthew Thomas Sumner is really quite a famous English musician. He's won 17 Grammys, both as a lead singer of the police as well as a solo career. Urbana. Sting. Sting, that's right. Question number 18, which play of William Shakespeare's includes the characters Bianca, Rodrigo, Cassio, Desdemona? Walkersville. Othello. Othello is right. Question 19, what is the abbreviation for the radioactive element polonium? Urbana. P-L. 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 That's P-O. And question number 20, in what sport do you have the sacrifice, the importance of hustle, and the intense desire to go home? Tuscarora. Baseball. Baseball, and that ends the match.
All right, we are ready for the lightning round in our third and final semifinal match. So lightning round. Oh wait, we gotta do buzzer check first. So buzzer check, please, Brunson. Can we do uh, Linganor three again? There we go. All right, great. Uh, looks good. And uh, introductions, yes, I'm just going through them. Brunswick, take it away. To my right is Jacob Winner. To my left is Sofia Krashaninikov. To my far left is Paige Trendell. I'm Mason Leffler, and I'd like to thank uh, my friends Kate, Grace, and Lauren for coming here tonight. All right. <laughs> Linganor. I'm Graham Smerick. I'm Lily Hart. I'm Eli Lubitz. I'm Leif Colgren. And we'd like to thank the LHS student section. There you go. Good talk to you. To my far right is Nora Dugan. To my right is Darren Fry. To my left is Carson Keller. I'm Nick Miller. And we'd like to thank our coach and our principal for coming out. Absolutely. Thank you. All right. Your lightning round topic is the Great Lakes. Answer these 10 questions based on things associated with the Great Lakes. Question number one. This is the common mnemonic word for remembering the names. Linganor. Holmes. Holmes is right. Question number two. This Great Lake is the farthest south. Catoctin. Michigan. Ah, it's Erie. Question three. This lake is the farthest north. Catoctin. Ontario. Ah, Superior is farthest north. Number four, Lake Superior is farthest west. What is farthest east? Brunswick. Ontario. That's Ontario, yes. Question number five, outside the North American Great Lakes, which Russian freshwater lake is largest in volume? Linganor. Uh, Baikal. Baikal, that's right. Question number six, during the last ice age, these rivers of ice carved the Great Lakes out of the ground over which they traveled. We call them glaciers. Question number seven, which Great Lake is completely within the United States? Brunswick. Answer please. Michigan. Michigan, that's right. Question number eight, Lake Superior is so deep, this New York City Art Deco landmark could be placed inside it. Linganore. Empire State Building. Excellent, Empire State Building, that's right. Wouldn't even be able to see the antenna. Question number nine, Gordon Lightfoot will visit the Weinberg Center in Frederick this summer, and hopefully he will sing his hit song, The Wreck of the Edmund Fitzgerald, which takes place on which Great Lake, whom the local Indians call Gitchigumi? Brunswick. Superior. Superior, yes, indeed. Question number 10, during this war, the Battle of Lake Erie was fought. Brunswick. The War of 1812. War of 1812 is correct, and then it's around. All right, we are ready for round two. Round two is the team round. Individual schools will be posed six questions on a, from a very broad variety of topics. One point added for a correct response, no points deducted for an incorrect response. Brunswick, any new players? To my far right is Harrison Leffler. To my immediate right is Sophia Krashaninikov. To my immediate left is Elijah Schollenbarger. I'm Angela Miller, and I'd like to thank the board members that came to watch tonight. Yes, absolutely. Bring it on. I'm Emily Jonas. I'm Abel Heine. And we would like to thank our assistant principal, Mr. Allen, for coming out tonight. All right. <laughs> Muckety mucks abound, which is great. Good talk. To my far right is Michael Metz. To my left is Hoyt Saylor. And we'd like to thank our track team for winning states. Yes. Excellent job. Good talk. All right. So this is uh, Linganor's choice for Brunswick. Would you guys like X, Y, or Z for Brunswick? X. X, indeed. These questions are just for Brunswick. Question number one. The U.S. has had a long, complicated history with the island of Cuba, which continues to this day. Name the bay where the U.S.-trained Cuban exiles attempted to invade the island and topple their communist government. The CIA-trained troops were not supported in the invasion by U.S. air power, and the mission failed completely. Name this embarrassing episode's location. Pigs. Bay of Pigs is correct. Question number two, what literary device has non-human characters or objects acquire human characteristics? Talking candelabras and animals, Walt Disney would not have gotten far without this technique. Yes. Persephone. 
personification? Correct. Question number three. Leonardo da Vinci was brilliant in many ways. He left sketches of a number of inventions he designed but did not build, which was not one of his ideas. Hot air balloon, a tank, a parachute, or a helicopter? Tank? Actually, the hot air balloon he never came up with, but the other three he did. Question number four. Science is constantly discovering new things. Uh, like there do seem to be some drawbacks to aerobic exercise. If I wanted to avoid aerobic exercise, which of these three should I do? Swim, walk, or push-ups? Swim? Uh, push-ups is what we should have done. Question number five. By area, this is the thar third largest country in the world, slightly ahead of the USA and Brazil. This Asian country is currently a unitary one party socialist republic, and it has operated that way since 1949. Name this country that runs from the Pacific in the east to the Himalayas in the west. China? China, yes. Question number six. This, uh, the Baseball Hall of Fame announced its inductees for this year, but let's not forget those already in. Cal Ripken Jr. is already in the Hall of Fame. For which team did he play shortstop? Yankees? Oh, not a bad guess. But you just broke Mr. Dumb's drum's heart. That ends the round for Brunswick. <laughs> Who did he play for? Orioles, yes. yes. That's all right. They're so smart and cute, you can't get mad. Okay, Katakton, you are picking for Linganore. Would you like Y or Z? Z. Z it is. These questions are just for Linganore. The U.S. has had a long, complicated history with the island of Cuba, which continues to this day. Give the name of the tense standoff between the U.S. and the USSR in October 1962 over the existence of nuclear weapons in Cuba. Cuban Missile Crisis. Correct. Question number two. What literary term describes the storytelling process where an author interrupts the telling of the tale with a previous scene from before the story's commencement? Sometimes it's called analepsis. It may give insight into a character. Flashback? Flashback, that's right. Question number three, Leonardo da Vinci was brilliant in many ways. In his famous sketch of Vitruvian Man, does the man pictured have four, six, or eight arms? Four. Correct. Question number four, is weightlifting considered aerobic or anaerobic exercise? Anaerobic. Anaerobic, that's right. Question number five. This is the largest country in the world by area, located in Northern Asia. It is currently called a federation, though it has had various governments throughout the last 150 years. Name this country that covers one-eighth of the world's landmass. Russia. Russia, that's right. And question number six. The Baseball Hall of Fame announced its inductees this year, and there is only one, David Ortiz. For what team did Big Poppy play? Red Sox. Red Sox is correct. And that ends the round. <laughs> I know you're stunned I had a Red Sox question. I'm going to think of the Yankees, but that was very smart. Well done. All right, Katakton, these are for you. The U.S. has had a long, complicated history with the island of Cuba, which continues to this day. Name the famous leader of Cuba who took power in a coup in 1959 and ruled the island until 2008. Name this famous communist leader of Cuba. Castro. Uh, be more specific. Fidel Castro. Excellent, yes. His brother Raul is also kind of in charge. Question number two. What literary term is an exaggeration for emphasis? It is commonly used in the phrase, I got a million things to do. Hyperbole. Hyperbole, right? Question number three. Leonardo da Vinci was brilliant in many ways. Which of these is not true about this great painter, scientist, and inventor? He was left-handed. His parents never married. He graduated college at 15, or he was a talented musician? Uh, parents never married. No, his parents did never marry. Uh, he actually never went to college. He never went to high school. He was pretty much a self-educated guy. It's kind of amazing. Question number four. What is considered the best form of aerobic exercise? Walking, cycling, or cross-country skiing? Cross-country skiing. That's right. They very, very rarely have extra pounds. 
Question number five. By area, this is the second largest country in the world, located in North America. It has 10 provinces and three territories. Name this huge country that extends from the Atlantic to the Pacific. Canada. Canada, indeed. And question number six. The Baseball Hall of Fame announced its inductees for this year, and the year is already being noted by who was not voted in. Alex Rodriguez, once baseball's highest paid player, was not inducted. In his career, he played for three teams, the Seattle Mariners, the Texas Rangers, and this team with whom he won the 2009 World Series. New York Yankees. That's the Yankees, and then ends the round. That's how you say it, baby. I need to go on round three. Here we go, round three is the math round. It's a competitive round using a buzzer system for team recognition. 10 questions, five of which are math questions, and five are general academic trivia questions. Players have 30 seconds to respond to the math questions. Remember, once the scores table recognizes you, you gotta answer right away, no discussion. One point added for a correct response, one point subtracted for an incorrect response. Brunswick, would you like to do into any introductions? Would you like to do any introductions? Yes, um, to my far left is Zoe Rzingiswa. To my immediate right is Nate Swires, and we would like to thank the administrators at Frederick High School for allowing us to use this auditorium. Absolutely, absolutely. We really appreciate it. Linganor. I'm Patricia Moses. I'm Thomas Scott. And we would like to thank the scorers table. There you go, plus one. And Katak. To my far right is Jay Cartness, and we'd like to thank all the parents who came out to support uh, everyone. Absolutely, absolutely. Fantastic. All right, we're ready to go on the math questions. Question number one is a math question. Express your answer to the nearest tenth of a percent. Vic play, pays $50 for 33 pounds of cashews, which he separates into smaller three-eighths pound bags. If Vic sells each bag for 79 cents, what percent of this selling price is profit? Time, 28.1%. Question number two, what is the capital of the Philippines? Brunswick. Yeah. Manila. Manila is right. Question number three is a math question. Add the following two numbers in base eight. Four, five, seven. One, two, three, seven. And four, seven, five, one, six, three. Five, two, four, six, four, two, two. Sorry, uh, is that the correct team answering? Linganor, yeah. Yeah, okay. So I have five, two, six, six, four, two, two. I'm just a little off. Question number four. What war included the generals Braxton Bragg, James Longstreet, Ambrose Burnside? Brunswick. Civil War. Civil War is right. Question number five is a math question. Mr. Scott has five algebra books and four geometry books. He wants to arrange them all on a single shelf. If Mr. Scott keeps all of the algebra books together and all of the geometry books together, how many ways can he arrange these books on his shelf? Two. Two. Uh, 5,760. I have no idea. Question number six. What do we call a doctor who diagnoses and treats skin disorders? Brunswick. Dermatologist. Dermatologist is right. Question number seven is a math question. How many radians is 225 degrees? Five pi over four. Recognition? Brunswick. Recognition? Brunswick. No. I'll say it. Five pi over four. There you go. Question number eight. Franz Kafka's 1915 story Metamorphosis is a strange tale about a young man who wakes up having been transformed into what kind of creature? Brunswick. Answer, please. 
Cockroach. Cockroaches, right? Question number nine is a math question. Express your answer as a decimal to the nearest tenth. Jamie is making pudding using a recipe that calls for 1.5 cups of milk and two cups of flour. He has 7.75 cups of milk and would like to make a batch of pudding using all of the milk. How many cups of flour will he need in order to keep? Linganore. 10.3. 10.3. You're all over. Good job. Question number 10, this coming of age musical is the most financially successful of all time. No, it's not Phantom of the Opera, actually. It's a Disney story. Brunswick. Uh, the Lion King. Lion King is right, and that ends the round. So round four is the specialty topic round. Uh, we have our scores table in there. Revolutionary red, looking great. And uh, it's a competitive round using the buzzer system for team recognition. Teams answer 10 questions from a special category announced in advance. Tonight's category is the French Revolution. One point added for a correct response, one point subtracted for an incorrect response. Brunswick, would you like to do any introductions? To my right is Matthew Porter, and we'd like to thank our principal, Dr. Dillman, uh, for being here. Absolutely. <laughs> Langanor. I'm Nora Ellis. I'm Zach Branch. I'm Daniel Amankodi. I'm Gautam Ramachandran. And we would like to thank Marie Antoinette for making her a boat. Okay. We'll take it. Good talk to No introduction said we'd like to thank the Ghost of Kiev for prote protecting Ukraine. All right. Okay. French Revolution questions. Here we go. Question number one. Henry IV of Navarre was the first Bourbon king, and the Louis that followed him all took the throne very young. This number Louis took the throne at five years of age. He ruled for 72 years. Good talk, then. Louis XIV. Correct. Nicely done. Question number two. The entire structure was razed to the ground by revolutionary decree. When the crowd captured it, there were only seven. Good talk, then. Bastille. Bastille. That's the Bastille, yeah. Question number three. The revolution wanted to change everything. And one of those things was the calendar. Any sensible person would know that this calendar wasn't going to work. Because instead of a seven-day week, they demanded a week of... Brunswick. Ten. Ten days. Can you imagine working for a living? Ten days. Question number four. It was one of the good things to come out of the revolution. Article one declares, men are born free. Brunswick. Declaration of Rights of Man and Citizen. Yes, very good. Question number five. People booed when they first saw this device used. Catoctin. Guillotine. They did. They liked to see the blood and guts. They didn't like it. It's kind of crazy. Question number six. Their names, their, sorry, their name comes from a nickname the French called Dominican Friars for their first meetings were held at a Dominican monastery. Name this incredibly important radical group that went too far. Linganore. Jacobins. Yeah. Jacobins. Jacobins, yes. Question number seven. 1792 was a tough year in France. Mass arrests had led to full jails all over Paris. In what month of that year did massacres break out? Catoctin. September. September massacres. Well done. Question number eight. This man visited Frederick in December 1824. Brunswick. Lafayette. Lafayette. He did indeed. Question number nine. It lasted slightly less than a year. Linganore. Reign of Terror. Reign of Terror. Exactly right. Well done. And question number 10. Perhaps not a surprise to hear that this man was reportedly very skilled at cards. Linganore. Napoleon. No, oh, not bad. Talleyrand there. Talleyrand. That ends the round. Uh, round five is the grab bag round, competitive round using the buzzer system for team recognition. 20 questions on a variety of topics. One point added for a correct response. One point subtracted for an incorrect response. Brunswick, any introductions? No, no new introductions, but I'd like to thank our great coaches for making everything we've done this year possible, and I'd like to wish Senor a very happy belated birthday. Cool. Linganore. Uh, no new introductions, but we'd like to thank James Brown for coming out tonight. Okay. And Katoxin. Uh No new introductions, and we'd like to thank Goldfish for always smiling back. There you go. All right, 20 questions for honor and glory. Here we go. Question number one. 
Super Bowl performers are an interesting way to look at popular music. This artist comes up often on a list of the best halftime shows ever, often named the greatest artist of his generation. He created the Minneapolis Sound, combining... Brunswick. Prince. Prince is right. Question number two, her long-awaited sequel was Go Set a Watchman, and it was published... Lee. Brunswick. Lee. Harper Lee. Question number three, made into a sulfate, this element is given to people to drink to improve the resolution. Brunswick. Ants, please. Barium. Barium is right. Question number four, this actor starred in both Game of Thrones and Elf. No small feat. Now he is trying to bring another story to life. Catoctin. Peter Dinklage. Peter Dinklage, well done. Question number five, what part of a person's body gets operated on if they get a rhinoplasty? Brunswick. Nose. Nose, that's right. Question number six, under this president, the departments of energy and education were established. Brunswick. Nixon. Uh, no, Carter. Question number seven, in a world where things get rebooted, rebranded, and renamed, this Disney production is no different. The original 50 episodes with Penny and her kooky family turned into a full-length movie and now a reboot. Penny is now in high school and having all the issues you would expect. Name the original show or the reboot of the show with Sugar Mama, Oscar, Trudy, Bebe, and Cece. Catoctin. Proud Family. Proud Family. Well done. The new uh, series is called Louder and Prouder. Question number eight. Name this center of the nation state founded by Oklahoma, Colorado, Nebraska. Brunswick. Kansas. Kansas is right. Question number nine. This plucked string instrument originated on the Indian subcontinent. It flourished in India from the 1500s. Brunswick. Sitar. Sitar is right. Question number 10. This Greek god was often shown as lame or club-footed, which makes him stand out in a party of godly beings. Name this Greek god. Brunswick. Hephaestus. Hephaestus is right. Question 11. John Wayne once had one of these removed from his body due to cancer, probably related to his smoking. These important organs. Brunswick. Lungs. Lungs is right. Question number 12. He once said, practice what you know, for it will make clear to you what you do not know. This artist's use of light across his canvases gave people the impression that they could see what the subject was thinking. Name this Dutch master who painted The Storm on the Sea of Galilee, The Anatomy Lesson, and The Night Watch. Brunswick. Rembrandt. Rembrandt is right. Question 13. What nine-time Oscar... Sorry, start it again. What nine-time Oscar-nominated actor starred in The Pelican Brief, Inside Man, John Q, Training Day, Glory, Remember the Titans, and a new version. Catoctin. Answer, please. Look for Denzel Washington there. Got his Oscars for Training Day and Glory. Choice. In what year was the Battle of Antietam? Catoctin. 1862. 1862. Well done. Question number 15. This professional sport is still suffering a lockout, though fans have not given up. Catoctin. Baseball. Baseball. Question 16. What is the capital of the state that has the ruffed grouse as its bird? Brunswick. Answer, please. Des Moines. Des Moines. I'd be really impressed if you got that one. The ruffed grouse is uh, Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. Question number 17. This musician had an eye condition that made one of his pupils larger than the other. His birth name was David Robert Jones. Name this talented performer, artist, and musician who created Ziggy Stardust and the hits. Brunswick. Bowie. David Bowie, yes. Question 18. She said, if you're always trying to be normal, you'll never know how amazing you can be. This African-American poet gave us on the pulse of mourning, still I rise and I will not be moved. Brunswick. Angelou. Angelou is right. Question 19. Here's a cute fact. These animals often hold hands or feet while asleep. Linganore. Otters. Otters. I had more cute facts about otters, but that's okay. You got the point. That's what matters. Question number 20. What Steven Spielberg film from 1993 starred Liam Neeson, Joseph Fine, and Ben Kingsley? Linganore. Schindler's List. Schindler's List is right. And that ends the match.
Uh, my name is uh, John Van Bloom, and uh, I'll be the moderator tonight. Uh, tonight's specialty topic is the French Revolution. Uh, we want to, before we uh, bring up the teams, uh, we do have a couple of uh, quick things to take care of. And one of them is uh, the regular season is over, and we have a champion for the regular season. This year's regular season champion is Brunswick High School. Congratulations, Brunswick. And uh, uh, some of the uh, administrators are up here, we were just talking, and it's kind of interesting. This year we have uh, the regular season champion in the final, and then we also have the defending champion in the final. Um, and that's, uh, I think it's going to be a great match. So, uh, so let's bring them up. If we could have Frederick High School, Urbana High School, and Brunswick High School. And it's pointed out that uh, in the regular season, these teams were uh, ranked first, second, and third. So they have made the final table, and that doesn't happen every year. That's kind of exciting. And uh, Urbana and Brunswick, you guys have met three times, right? You've each won once, and you tied once. There will be no ties tonight. <laughs> All right. I got extra questions if we need them. All right. Uh, let's do buzzer check. Deep breath, savor, right? This is fun, be in the moment. And uh, round one is uh, lightning round. They do not know this topic. Nobody knows this topic, it's right in front of me. And um, we'll be asking them 10 questions on the buzzer system for recognition. One point up for a correct answer, one point down for an incorrect answer. Team introductions. To my far left is Stella, to my left is Remy, to my right is Nick, I'm Paul, and we'd like to thank Mr. Van Bloom for moderating through the season. Plus one. Thank you, it's been a lot of fun. My freshman year, my freshman year, we'll see. Urbana. To my far right, to my far left is Thomas, to my immediate left is Ubby, to my immediate right is Holden. I'm Trevor, and we'd like to thank Superintendent Dr. Marke. Absolutely. <laughs> Who's still here? Still here, fantastic. Brunswick. To my right is Jacob Winner. To my left is Angela Miller. To my far left is Paige Trendell. I'm Mason Leffler, and I'd like to thank all the parents who came out to support us tonight. Absolutely. Thank you for coming. Okay. Your final round, final lightning round, is palindromes. English can be a... F oh, look at the groan from the crowd. Gosh. <laughs> you don't have to know them. It's just them. It's okay. Uh, English can be a fun language. Uh, some words are spelled exactly the same if read front to back or back to front. Each answer is a palindrome, so be sure to pronounce things correctly. Right? Here we go. Question number one. We use this word to mean straight, flat, and even. Builders use this. Urbana. Level. Level. That's right. Question number two. A fancier word for misses. Urbana. <laughs> Madame. Madame or madam, yeah. Question number three, a type of canoe used by the Inuit. Urbana. Kayak? Kayak, yes. Question number four, the process of making someone or something into a god in the past. Brunswick. Oh, oh deified. deified. Answer, please. Deified. Deified, yes. Well done. Question number five, this goes very fast around a track. Urbana. Race car. Race car, yes. You're waiting for that one. Question number six, the opposite of midnight. Urbana. Noon. Noon. It took a beat, but you got it. Remember the category is, uh, yeah, thank you. Uh, category is palindromes, and we are on question number seven. The full name of the main character in Holes for his first and last name. Urbana. Answer, please. 
truck auto. Stanley Yelnats. Question number eight. This palindrome supposedly comes from radio detection and ranging. Radar? Urbana. Radar? Radar is right. Question number nine. A long story of heroic achievement in the plural. Brunswick. Ants, please. Sagas. Sagas. Got to go with the Iceland, the Norse. It's a Norse word. Question number 10. If you were to put up wallpaper in your room... Brunswick. Repaper. Repaper. And that ends the round. <laughs> round two is a team round. Individual schools will be posed six questions on a broad variety of topics. One point for a correct response. No points deleted for an incorrect response. Frederick, any new players? To my far left is Jonas. To my right is Sophia. And we'd like to thank our principal, Dr. Franceschina. Absolutely. The host. The host with the most. Urbana. Uh, to my right is Marge, to my immediate left is Jenna, and to my far left is Jono, and we'd like to thank all the new players this year. Excellent. And Brunswick. To my right is Sophia Krashaninikov, to my far left is Maggie Williams, to my immediate left is Harrison Leffler. I'm An I've already been introduced, but I'm Angela Miller, and I'd like to thank the scorer's table. Okay. All right, so uh, this is Urbana's choice for Frederick. Would you like X, Y, or Z for them? Why? Why? Indeed. Question number one. The U.S. has had challenges in dealing with the Middle East for more than 50 years. Relations with this country, originally called Persia, deteriorated under the Shah, who was supported by the U.S. A revolution occurred here in 1979. The American embassy was overrun, and embassy personnel were taken hostage. This hostage crisis, though ultimately resolved under Ronald Reagan, did not improve relations. More recently, concern has risen that this country is developing nuclear weapons. Name this majority Shia country in the Middle East. Iran. Iran, that's right. Question number two. The movie adaptation of this book by Mario Puzo was nominated for 11 Academy Awards and won four, including Best Picture, Best Screenplay, and Best Actor for Marlon Brando's characterization of Don Corleone. The Godfather. The Godfather, that's right. Question number three. Do you know the music from the decade of your birth? which pop star's big hits include Oops, I Did It Again, Toxic, and Womanizer. Britney Spears. Britney Spears, indeed. Question number four. Our atmosphere is thin compared to the size of the Earth itself, but we divide it into layers. This is the second main layer from 12 to 50 miles above our surface. It gets hotter the higher you go. Which layer is home to the ozone layer, the stratosphere or the mesosphere? Stratosphere. Stratosphere is correct. Question number five, Canadian provinces and territories are always a fun geography question. There are only 13. That's way easier than the 50 states. Created in 1999, this is Canada's largest and most northern territory. With only 40,000 people, it is one of the sparsest settled areas in the world. Name this newest Canadian territory with its capital at Ukaluit. Nunavut. Nunavut, and he even said it right. Well done. Question number six, in 2021, this social media giant remains the most used not too far from three billion regular users. Name this social media founded in 2004. Facebook. Facebook, and that ends the round for Frederick. <laughs> so Brunswick, X or Z for Urbana? X. X indeed. Question number one, the US has had challenges in dealing with the Middle East, the majority Muslim countries for more than 50 years. This Asian country is a militaristic neighbor to India and Afghanistan. A long-running feud over the Kashmir province does not help. Even more significant for interest, U.S. interests, it was this country that the U.S. military entered without permission to kill a hidden Osama bin Laden. Name this country that borders Iran, but is usually described as being located in South Asia. Pakistan. Pakistan. Question number two. The movie adaptation of this book by L. Frank Baum was nominated for six Academy Awards, but famously lost the Best Picture Award to Gone with the Wind. The Oscar the film adaptation did win was for Best Song. Name the book that isn't as good as the movie that solidified Judy Garland as the top actress in Hollywood. Answer, please. Wizard of Oz? Wizard of Oz, yeah. Question number three. Do you know the music from the decade of your birth? Which pop star's hits include You Belong to Me, Teardrops on My Guitar, and Love Story? Taylor Swift. Taylor Swift. Question number four. Our atmosphere is thin compared to the size of the Earth itself, but we divide it into layers. This layer merges with the solar wind at its extreme edges. Which is the layer on the outermost edge of our atmosphere, the exosphere or the thermosphere? 
Exosphere. Exospheres, right. Question number five, Canadian provinces and territories are always a fun geography question. There are only 13. It's way easier than the 50 states. This eastern province is home to the Bay of Fundy, which has the highest tides in the world. Name this far eastern, but not the easternmost province of Canada, abbreviated NS, with its capital at Halifax. Nova Scotia. Nova Scotia. And question number six, in 2021, this social media app won the most trending title. Though the New York Times reported recently that as many as a third of its daily users might be under 14, named this video sharing app owned by the Chinese company ByteDance. TikTok. TikTok is right, and that ends the round for the bank. Brunswick, these questions are for you. The U.S. has had challenges in dealing with the Middle East for more than 50 years. This Islamic country in the Middle East is generally accepted as being run by Mohammed bin Salman al Saud, or MBS. As the king's son, he wields enormous power in the kingdom. MBS is widely admired for his political skills, but is also notorious for his involvement in the murder of journalist Jamal Khashoggi. Name his country that contains two of the holiest cities in Islam, Mecca and Medina. Saudi Arabia. Saudi Arabia is correct. Question number two. This movie adaptation of the book by Harper Lee was nominated for eight Academy Awards and won three. One of the awards went to Gregory Peck, who paid Scout's father in this coming-of-age story about trying to walk around in other people's shoes. To Kill a Mockingbird. Correct. Question number three. Do you know the music from the decade of your birth? Which pop star's hits include Halo, Crazy in Love, and Irreplaceable? Beyonce. Indeed. Question number four. Our atmosphere is thin compared to the size of the Earth itself, but we divide it into layers. Which is the, atmosphere, which is the layer closest to the ground, the troposphere or the mesosphere? Troposphere? Troposphere is right. Question number five. Canadian provinces and territories are always a fun geography question. There are only 13. It's way easier than the 50 states. The westernmost of the territories is this one, famous for being really, really cold in the winter and a gold rush. It also has fantastically beautiful natural scenery, but I suggest going in summer. Name this territory abbreviated YT with its capital at Whitehorse. Yukon? Yukon is right. And question number six. Statista.com reports that this free video sharing website is ranked second in users slightly ahead of WhatsApp. Name this source of streaming content that desperately wants you to subscribe. That started in 2005. YouTube. YouTube is right, and that ends the round. Awesome. All right, we are ready for the math round. Competitive round using the buzzer system for team recognition. Ten questions, with five being math questions and five general academic trivia questions sprinkled in between. Players have 30 seconds to respond to the math questions. Remember, once the scorer's table recognizes you for the math question, you have to answer right away. Question, uh, scoring is one point for a correct response, one point subtracted for an incorrect response. Frederick, any new players? Um, to my left is Tony, and we'd like to thank all the teachers that helped us uh, accumulate all our knowledge. Absolutely. <laughs> Urbana. To my far right is Rital, to my immediate right is Rohit, and we'd like to thank Jimmy Yang. Oh, -ho. Fred Walker still appreciates that, and Brunswick. To my right is Nate Swires, to my far left is Elijah Schellenberger, and we would like to thank Il Forno's Pizza for being our post-tournament tradition. Hey, that is a good idea, that is a good idea. Okay, we are ready for the math round. Question number one. What is the capital of Latvia? Brunswick. Riga. Riga. Riga is right. Question number two is a math question. Express your answer as a decimal to the nearest hundredth. Manny's cleaning supply store receives a mixture of 80% detergent and 20% water in 15-gallon buckets. Manny would like a mixture of 60% detergent and 40% water in 5-gallon buckets. To make this, he combines some 80-20 mixture with some pure water in each five-gallon bucket. How many gallons of pure water does Manny need to add to each five-gallon bucket? Urbana. Five. 1.25. Question number three. Who won the Divine Comedy in 1320? Brunswick. Dante. Dante will take. Question number four is a math question. Of the following three numbers, which is greater? One, zero, one, 
and one base two. The arithmetic mean of 15, 6, 30, 24, 11, 29, and 25, or log base 3 of 4,782,969. Does anyone have the wrong number? Urbana. Log base three of one one six two two six one four six seven. No, we're looking for the, the second one. Uh, and the highest number would have been twenty. So it worked out kind of evenly. Question number five. What American war included the military leaders Friedrich von Steuben, William Howe, Thomas Gage, Benedict Arnold? Urbana. Revolutionary War. Revolutionary War, yes. Question number six is a math question. If each of the numbers 2, 7, 3, and 8 is assigned to one of the variables A, B, C, and D, what is the greatest possible value of AB plus BC plus CD? Urbana. 101. 94. Question number seven. The original Broadway production of this musical debuted in 1964 and was the first musical to have over 3,000 performances. The Hollywood Reporter tells us that both a new film version and a revival on Broadway are on their way. Urbana. Hairspray? Uh, Fiddler on the Roof. Question number eight is a math question. A set of test scores is normally distributed if 95% of students scored between 52% and 84% on the test. Below what percent did a student have to score on the test to be in the bottom 16% of the class? Urbana. 60? 60% correct. Question number nine, what do we call a doctor who specializes in the health of the heart and blood vessels? Brunswick. Cardiologist. Cardiologist, you're right. And question number 10 is a math question. And is the last math question I have to read this season. It's pretty exciting. <laughs> Students at Baldwin Middle School cast 432 votes for student government president. If the number of votes the losing candidate received was 60% of the number that the winner received, how many more votes than the loser did the winner receive? Urbana. 108. 108 is correct, and that ends the round. We are ready for round four. Round four is a specialty round. It's a competitive round using a buzzer system for team recognition. Teams answer 10 questions from a special category announced in advance. Tonight's category, French Revolution. One point added for a correct response, one point subtracted for an incorrect response. Frederick, any new players? To my far left is Jack, to my right is Pia, and we'd like to thank all our fans for coming to support us. Shout out to the fans. Urbana. To my media right is Suhan. To my far right is Sarah. I am Selena, and we would like to thank Mr. Van Balloon. Thank you. And Brunswick. Uh, to my right is Matthew Porter, and we would like to thank uh, all the parents for being here. Absolutely. You need a ride home after all. All right. 
10 questions on the French Revolution. Here we go. Henry IV of Navarre was the first Bourbon king, and the Louis that followed him all took the throne very young. This Louis was all of 19 when he ascended the throne. Urbana. Louis the 16th? 16th is correct. Question number two, he actually made some money as a doctor in London until his return to France in 1777. A radical leader, he became a newspaper editor. Frederick. Marat. Marat is right. <laughs> Question number three, what nickname is given to the 28th of February, 1781? Noblemen loyal to the king were worried he faced assassination. Brunswick. Day of Daggers. Day of Daggers, yes, what a great name. Horrible situation, but a great name. Question number four, a new exhibit of this artist's work just opened at the Met in New York City. Brunswick. David. David, indeed, well done. Question number five, this is a two-part answer. Two types of nobility existed in the regime ancien. One of the groups earned their nobility through service. Frederick. Answer, please. Looking for the nobility of the sword and the nobility of the robe on that one. Question number six, what prominent facial feature gave away King Louis XVI as he tried to flee France? Frederick. Chin. Ah, it was his nose. And the uh, guy who pulled him over actually pulled out a money to look at the money and look at him. Yeah, I think that's you. That's awesome. Question number seven, his birth name was Francois-Marie Arouet. Brunswick. Voltaire. Voltaire, well done, yes. <laughs> Question number eight, this naval battle cut off Napoleon in Egypt. Urbana. Battle of the Nile. Battle of the Nile, yes. Why did I spend so much time with the other details on these questions? You guys are going to stay around after and listen to all the details about the Battle of the Nile. I read all about it. They don't want to hear. Moving on. Question number nine. I guess everyone knows the English and French don't get along, but in revolutionary France, the French people all hated people from this country. Every plot to resurrect... Urbana. Uh, Answer, please. Prussia? Oh, Austria. Austria, yeah. Unfortunately, of course, Marie Antoinette was also Austrian, right? So that's part of the problem. And question number 10. During the 1795 White Terror, various Jacobin forces were arrested and killed. In Paris, a royalist uprising was crushed by this general. Brunswick. Napoleon. Napoleon, and that ends the round. We're ready for the final round of the season. And of course, it is a grab bag round, competitive round using the buzzer system for team recognition. 20 questions on a wide variety of topics Scoring one point added for a correct response, one point subtracted for an incorrect response. Frederick, any final introductions? To my far left is Nahid, and we'd like to thank all the rest of our teammates for being here to support us, and we couldn't do it without you. That's right, every, every team that's up here, there is dozens of other players who have helped these guys get as good as they are, and it's a really, really great team sport. Urbana, how about you guys? To my immediate left is Nathan, and we would like to thank Frederick and Brunswick for the great match. Absolutely. <laughs> Speaking as a fan, I can say I am totally entertained. How about Brunswick, any last thoughts? We have no new introductions, but I think I can speak on behalf of all the seniors when I'd like to thank all the great teams and players we've got to go against for over the past four years. Yeah. Absolutely, <laughs> excellent. Okay, here we go. Last 20 questions. Question number one. This German composer is mostly known for his operas, which he thought needed to be visually as well as musically stimulating. Name the composer of Tristan and Isolde and The Ring Cycle. Brunswick. Wagner. Wagner? Wagner is right. Question number two. What should a wife do when her husband sees her as a child or a child's plaything? This Heinrich Ibsen play is about a woman. Brunswick. A doll's house? Doll's house is right. Question number three, this is the third largest planet in our solar system. Brunswick. Answer, please. Neptune. Uh, Uranus. Question number four, the American Film Institute named her as the greatest American screen legend for the female category. She was nominated 12 times for the Oscars and won four, the most of any actor or actress. She starred in Morning Glory. Guess. Frederick. Betty White. 
<laughs> no, uh, no, uh, Catherine Hepburn, we're looking for there. Question number five, with nearly 40,000 restaurants, this is the largest fast food chain in the world. Subway. Urbana. Subway? Ah, uh, no, uh, McDonald's has now passed Subway. What it told you all about, but we'll move on. Question number six, what European war includes the siege of Sevastopol, the Battle of? Urbana. Crimean War? Crimean War, well done. One battle, that's good. Question number seven. One concern with the fallout of Russia's attack on its neighbor is the fate of this island nation. Urbana. Taiwan? Taiwan, yes. Question number eight. This is a four-part answer. There is one spot in the United States where four different states... Brunswick. New Mexico, Colorado. Arizona, Utah, New Mexico, Colorado. Correct. Four corners. Question number nine, it's bellows driven with two wooden blocks with buttons to control the melody. Bigger than a concertina or a bandoneon, name this musical instrument. Frederick. Accordion. Accordion, nicely done. You didn't need squeeze box. Question number 10, life is a journey, not a destination. What New England transcendentalist wrote the essays Nature and On? Brunswick. Emerson? Emerson, yes. Question 11. This rare elemental metal is sometimes used in crowns and dental fillings. Silvery in appearance, it is named for one of the honorifics of Athena. Name this element that is a key element in fuel cells number 46, abbreviated PD. Brunswick. Palladium? Palladium is right. Question number 12. He once said, I want to express my feelings, not illustrate them. Sometimes this man's art was called all over painting or splash painting. Frederick. Jackson Pollock. Jackson Pollock, that's right. Question number 13, just this past week, this man launched Truth Social, a new social media platform. Urbana. Donald Trump. Donald Trump, that's right. Question number 14, before the Greek victory over the Persians at Plataea, it was this naval battle that pushed Xerxes and his army back. The Greek general Themistocles goaded the Persians into attacking the smaller Greek navy in a narrow strait here in 480 BCE. Frederick. Thermopylae? Uh, no, that's a land battle. We're looking for Salamis. 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 15. Uh, this country of 5 million people actually won more gold medals and more medals. Norway. Brunswick. Norway. Norway. That's right. Question number 16. The Latin motto for this state is Six Semper Tyrannis. Urbana. Virginia, right? Virginia? Virginia is right. Question number 17. This musician grew up on Long Island. He said he would play Madison Square Garden every month until one of his shows did not sell out. He is? Brunswick. Joel? Yes, Billy Joel. He's doing his 82nd consecutive monthly show this July. Crazy. Question 18. He spends 28 years trapped on a fictional island in the Caribbean. Frederick. Robinson Crusoe. Robinson Crusoe, well done. Question number 19, a Mexican hairless is one, a Maltapu, and a Chow Chow. Urbana. Dog? Dog, yeah, types of dog. And question number 20, she once said, it's not enough to be nice in life, you've got to have nerve. Name this modernist painter, known for her works depicting flowers. Her paintings. Brunswick. O'Keefe. O'Keefe is right, and that ends the match. Okay, let's start giving out some, uh, give out some awards and prizes here. We want to thank everybody for a fantastic season. One of the ways we always start uh, is we want to uh, recognize one particular group of people who are so instrumental in us being successful and putting this on every week. Uh, this is the eighth week, although we had a snow out and then we had to rearrange and everything. It's, it's, been, a, it's been a crazy, crazy year. So we always give out the uh, Chuck Thomas Award. Uh, which is to people who have made tremendous contributions uh, to our success here. And uh, this year, we are giving it uh, to the Frederick High custodial staff for all the work that they do. If uh, Bill Jenkins is here, Bill is a custodian here at the school. He's a graduate from Frederick County. He's actually a, a graduate of Frederick High working at his alma mater. How cool is that? Here he goes. 
Thank you, Bill. Thank you to all the custodial staff for all you guys too. Bill wanted a shout out, class of 76. So. Well done. Okay, so um, secondly, we want to start calling some of the teams up. And uh, again, uh, I just want to emphasize how much work goes into this, that the teams, you know, you just see like four people up here, or they four people, and then they change out to another four people. But, but students are working every week. They're researching. They're, they're paying attention. They're taking notes. They're sharing Google Docs with absurdly long lists of weird people from the French Revolution. They're just doing all kinds of work to try and make this happen. And uh, it's not only entertaining, I think it's, it's really good for us to see them and see the young people, the future leaders of our country, doing such a fantastic job. Right? Can we have a round of applause for all the <laughs> effort we saw tonight? Wow, what an amazing evening to watch the scholars and intellects really compete up here on the stage. I am so very impressed with your knowledge and your wisdom and your skills. Congratulations for your hard work this year. Congratulations to Brunswick for winning it. And I think we may have a future host of Jeopardy. What do you think? Very impressive, Mr. Van Bloom. Thank you to the parents, the coaches. Uh, for coming out and supporting it, as well as the students that came out to support their peers. What a wonderful evening, and I am so very impressed. Thank you very much. Frederick High. Thank you, TJ. All right, Lancers, well done. You had a lot of great nights this year. I love the play-in game. I love watching it. I loved how you guys kept battling to the last second all the way through. That's the way to play this game. You battle to the last second. So great spirit. Nicely job. Nice job. Middletown Knights. Thank you, Oakdale. I love the blackout, too. Look at that. Tuscarora High School, everybody. That's here for the Hawks. Good job, Urbana. Walkersville coaches have told me that the vast majority of their team are freshmen and sophomores. So we'll be looking for them next year. Last but not least, we have the regular season champions who became our finals night champion. It's a rare double. It's not easy to pull off. There's a lot of expectations that go into it, and you see how they had to claw their way back into the match to pull it out. They get a plaque for academic tournament champions, and then they get to hold the trophy for a year. It's, yeah, squeeze together. <laughs> Brunswick Railroaders Academic Tournament Champions 2022. <laughs> 